Hey guys, good morning. Uh, I am here at Brevity Coffee again in Lexington, Kentucky. As uh, we continue going through Acts chapter 4 today, so uh, uh, before we get to this Memory Monday, I'm going to change it up a little bit. You know, it, as, I've, as I've read through this passage a couple of times, I haven't learned it yet. I'm wait, waiting to do that kind of with you guys. Uh, but as I've read through this passage, as we've gone through you know, the first 22 verses of, of Acts chapter 4, in this story, I'm just reminded, what, what is it I pray about? How do I pray? As one of God's children, what are the things that I'm asking Him for? Now, we have the model prayer in Matthew chapter 6, right, that's repeated again in Luke. Uh, and, and so there's, there's, some, there's some things there. We're told how, how to pray. We're told what to pray for. But here in the book of Acts, as we look at the disciples, as they begin their, their new journey in the role of apostles or church planters, and when I, when I say church planters, I mean the church planters, right? Uh, but uh, just what, what is it we're praying for? As we look at the story, I, I would like for us, even as we begin to learn it, to think about what do we ask the Lord for? What does it show about our heart, right? Uh, because in this passage, you know, in the, in the previous story that we did last week, when the Sanhedrin saw the boldness of Peter and John, they realized that they had recognized that they had been with Jesus. Uh, and, and now we're going to see them get released from their overnight incarceration and their, their quick religious trial. And uh, even as they're released, as they, as they go through, they begin to pray, again, not for safety, not for judgment on these ungodly people, not for retribution, but for boldness. And, and I just can't help but wonder, you know, I, I'm looking at my own prayer life, not, not typically where I, where I end up, right? Uh, my son, right after uh, when he was still in college, felt the leadership of the Lord to travel around the country, live by faith. He would just get in his car, he would take these faith trips, right? He'd be gone for two or three weeks, and uh, he would just get in his car, he wouldn't take any money with him, and, and he would travel, and then God would provide. It was just, an, it's, a, it's an amazing testimony, and, and I think much of who he has become today uh, has, has come about because of those things that God did. But you know, in looking back at this, as I'm learning this story and I'm just thinking, wow, as I was praying for him, you know what my want was? My, my, my default? My default was to pray for his safety. And we did, and there's nothing wrong with that, right? But even as we, even as we prayed, I'm, I'm not sure that are really focused on boldness. We, we did pray for effectiveness at different times and different places that is, you know, as he would kind of let us know what was going on uh, in, in some areas. But as I, as I look back at that experience in my life, uh, kind of disappointed in myself that I, I didn't pray more about that. And even today, you know, as, uh, as, as I'm not traveling, but starting to get on planes a little bit more. As, as I pray for opportunities, I wonder if I should pray as much for boldness. And so as we learn this story today, in Acts chapter 4, uh, verses 23 through 31, I would encourage you, even as we begin to learn it, uh, begin to think through some of those questions in your own mind. So I appreciate you joining with us. Stick with us as we learn this story together. So what we have going on here is Peter and John, uh, they healed this uh, disabled man who went into the temple and people were freaking out. 
uh, and there were thousands of people that gathered to hear Peter speak, and we're told that they, they used this as a platform not to speak about power, not to speak about healing, but to speak about the fact that in Jesus was the resurrection of the dead. That got him in trouble with the Sadducees. Uh, they were bound up overnight and then appeared before the Sanhedrin. And you can, you can almost see the Sanhedrin thinking, okay, we're going to put the fear, not of God, but the fear of us in these men. And they just weren't afraid at all. And initially, Peter started speaking and uh, spoke about how they were responsible for putting Jesus to death. And then later on in that story, we see Peter and John were both speaking. We're not told what John said, but we are told that, that he spoke. And, and in that story, it says, see the boldness of Peter and John that the leaders knew, the Sanhedrin recognized that they'd been with Jesus. And, uh, and, and now that kind of leads, then they were released which leads us to our story today. And I'm, I'm reading this from the CSB because there's actually a little translation issue uh, between the CSB and the New King James in that uh, in speaking, as they're speaking about what David said, uh, the, the text says, through the Holy Spirit. And so it was like, mm, okay, we're gonna we're gonna go with this. So, uh, but take the New King James, take the New American Standard, take the CSB. Compare these for yourself as you're compiling this story. And here's the story. So after they were released, they after Peter and John were released, they went to their own people and reported everything the chief priest and the elders had said to them when they heard this so when the believers heard this they raised their voices together to god and said master lord you are the one who made the heaven the earth and the sea and everything in them you said through the holy spirit by the mouth of our father david your servant why do the gentiles rage and the people's and the people's plot futile things the kings of the earth take their stand and the rulers assemble together against the Lord and against his Messiah. For in fact, in this city, both Herod and Pontius Pilate with the Gentiles and the people of Israel assembled together against your holy servant Jesus, whom you anointed to do whatever your hand and your will had predestined to take place. And now, Lord, consider their threats and grant that your servants may speak your word with all boldness. There it is. While you stretch out your hand for healing and signs and wonders are performed through the name of your holy servant Jesus. When they had prayed, the place where they assembled was shaken and they were all filled with the Holy Spirit and began to speak the word of God boldly. And there's our story from God's word. Now, as I'm looking at this story, there's, there's several things, that, and I, you can see where I changed the pronouns. They, Peter and John, and then later on, they, the believers. Uh, and, and, and I'm making a really specific word choice here because at this point, they weren't Christians. They weren't called Christians till later on at Antioch, right? So. I want to be accurate to the word, uh, and, uh, and, and, and yet I, I want it to say what's going to be really understandable in a conversation. Uh, and, and there is a quote, and I need to look this quote up, so as I'm preparing this story, this is what I'll be doing today and tomorrow. Uh, you said through the Holy Spirit by the mouth of your servant, or our father, David, your servant. Uh, and then they quote, and I'm pretty sure that's some, from Psalms, so I'm going to look that up. And it talks about how David, as I'm learning this story, you know, you, you have Peter and John released, he's talking to the believers, and then they quote David from someplace, why do the Gentiles rage and the people plot futile things? The kings of the earth take their stand and the rulers assemble together against the Lord and against his Messiah. So they plainly see what the Sanhedrin is doing as gathering together against the Lord and against the Messiah. So they're, they're, being, pretty, they're being pretty specific here, right? And then they give a little history lesson. 
Herod, Pontius Pilate, with the Gentiles and the people of Israel, they assemble together against your servant, Jesus, whom you anointed. Uh, and, and then it talks about God's predestination. This was part of his plan, right? He wasn't surprised by any of this. Uh, and, and then they said, okay, Lord, consider their threats. Give us boldness. So to me, that is the meat. So they, they're they released, they gather together, they rehearse what David said, then they apply what the Sanhedrin and Pontius Pilate and the rulers did. Uh, and now they kind of get to the meat of, of what they're praying. Give us boldness. And they, they, they do, you know, I want to be real careful here because it says, while you stretch out your hand for healing and signs and wonders, are performed through the name of our holy servant Jesus. So it's, it's not that they're doing away with the miracles and the wonders, uh, but they want those to be springboards to, to preach the message, right? And they want to do it with boldness. And then as I get to the end of this, just thinking ahead, when they prayed, the place where they were assembled was shaken, and they were all filled with the Holy Spirit uh, and began to speak the word boldly. So that prayer was answered like, instantly, right? Uh, but it is interesting that here you have these people who just prior to this were filled with the Holy Spirit and now they're filled again. So what, what you know, as, I, as I'm just learning the story, I'm thinking ahead to myself, what might I learn? Uh, what questions might I ask uh, about the filling of the Holy Spirit? Because they were filled and now they're filled again. So what, what might that tell me about walking in the power day to day uh, of the Holy Spirit. So I would love to see as you go through this story, are there questions that pop up in your mind? I'll be doing this story on a Zoom call in a Central Asian country. And uh, so if you see some things here, I would love to have you share it with me either in the comments or at the end of this video, I'll have my email address, vernon at simplythestory.org. Uh, if there's questions that pop up to you, like, wow, I don't get this, or I don't understand this, or, uh, you know, the, I, I would love to, to have you share those. Uh, we just, this is our 201st, I'm saying that right, uh, video that we've done since the pandemic. And uh, I'm going to try to increase our, our quality and I'm going to tweak some things here a little bit. And so if you have suggestions or thoughts, you're not going to hurt my feelings. And I'll either listen to them or say, mm, boy, that's the dumbest thing I ever heard uh, and not do it. But I would still like to hear it. I won't say that's the dumbest thing I ever heard on camera. All right. So I'll put that out there. If you have not subscribed to the channel, I would appreciate it. I'll we'll kind of build this up a little bit. And, uh, you know, the reality is uh, I am never going to be a YouTube influencer. I get that. But when I die, maybe my grandchildren will be able to look at this and, uh, and, and learn a few things and maybe dig into the scripture and see some things that uh, they wouldn't have seen otherwise. So until the next time, keep on telling those Bible stories.